Guys, hello. As I promised, part 3 is here. I know, it's your favorite story now and you didn't want to wait any longer, and so do I let's start. I called my boss and told him I would be at work on Tuesday. He seemed happy that he didn't have to fire me. I worked the rest of the week. I couldn't get my mind off thinking about Kathy. I didn't have her cell phone number, and I wouldn't dare call the Jennings house. I wasn't allowed back in the restaurant due to the fight, so I didn't get to see her. I did pull into the restaurant and saw her through the windows. She looked out at me but then went back to work. On Saturday I went to the bar by myself. I saw Ben there with some guy I didn't know. Ben knew what happened to Rob but didn't say anything. I tossed down the disc and told him it was a movie for him to watch. I suggested he not watch it with anyone else around, including his mother. He gave me a weird look and took the disc. The following weekend I was back in the bar with a couple of friends. Ben was there with a couple of buddies also. He asked to speak to me privately. He didn't seem very happy, I also had to remember I couldn't afford to get in any fights. Ben and I stepped outside. You fuck my mother, you asshole. What the fuck is the matter with you? Listen Ben, it was your idea. You said, I'm not married. I got no girlfriend, no sister, what the fuck are you going to do? Fuck my old lady. Then you laughed at me. I did go see your mom and she's a nice but lonely person. We spent some time together as you saw. There are two copies of that disc. You have the one and I have the other. Mine will stay buried and probably never be seen again unless you pull some more shit on me. Remember this all started because you fucked my wife before she was my ex. So do we call it a truce or do we get into it till one of us is in the hospital? Or in jail? I asked. You promise never to be with my mom again? I can't take that, replied Ben. Ben, she called me honey. She doesn't even know my name. It was a one-time thing for the both of us. So do we have a truce? No more name calling. Okay, said Ben. The first beer is on me. We went inside and we all had a few beers together. Back on Mary Ann's home front, she had Rob living with her. He would be off for at least two months. He figured he would live with her since Ben's mother kind of wanted him out. Mary Ann had her hands full. Rob wasn't the best homebody and really wasn't much help. The following week I had just got home from work when my phone rang. I couldn't believe it when I heard Kathy's voice on the other end. Jim, I have a few things to tell you. Do you have a few minutes? For you I have all night. I didn't know if you would ever talk to me again. I'm sorry you had to testify at my hearing. I know it was hard for you. If it wasn't for you I'd probably be in jail right now. Jim, I volunteered to testify in your behalf. All I did was tell the truth. My parents were mad at first, but they realized I did the right thing after all. So, what do you need to tell me? Mary Ann had her baby this morning. It's a cute little boy. I don't think they are going to need your DNA because the little fellow is of black descent. What? So do you think it was Tony's? I asked. What did Rob say? I take it he was there. Yes, he was here and when he saw the baby was black he left the hospital. He said he wasn't going to father a black kid. He thought the baby was his, that's why he was going to marry Marianne. He told my parents on the way out that the wedding was off. So is Marianne going to have Tony tested? I asked. She said maybe. To be honest, I don't think she's sure Tony is the father either. She hasn't said either way. Mom and dad are really pissed at her, but they won't take it out on the baby. They know it wasn't his fault and it's their first grandchild. They would have preferred him to be white, but not much they can do about that. I think you're looking a lot better to them than Rob does. They don't want him back in their house. Anything else new? You know like me seeing you. I graduate next week. Want an invitation? Sure, I'll be there. You know my address, just send it to me. You can pick it up at the restaurant on Wednesday. I work that day. Kathy, I've been banned from that Bob Evans. I don't need to get arrested. I talked to the owner. I told him the story and that you were protecting me. Even the two cops told him that Rob instigated the whole thing. I saw you watching me from outside the restaurant but never came in. So, will I see you Wednesday morning? It's my last day at the restaurant. I graduate on Sunday and then have a week off till I start work full time at the hospital. Five days a week in the maternity ward. Okay, I'll trust you and come to the restaurant. I hope I don't get locked up. Then I'd miss the graduation. I did show up at the restaurant, and she gave me one ticket to the graduation and a schedule of when the nursing graduates would be getting their diplomas. 
In some of the larger colleges they would have over a thousand graduates, and they had a particular time frame for the different degrees. The parking lot was so full they actually bus people to the stadium where the ceremonies were held. I arrived at the appointed time and went up in the stands. I couldn't believe there were so many graduates. They were wearing one of three colored robes. Kathy did tell me she would be wearing a white one. I have to admit that didn't narrow it down much. I couldn't believe that in a stadium that big that when I looked over in the next section one saw Mr. and Mrs. Jennings. Also sitting with them was Mary Ann with a baby in like a big basket. I later found out that Kathy's parents informed Mary Ann that she would attend her sister's graduation. I was there, but how would I ever know which graduate was Kathy? When they got to the nursing curriculum, a large number of students stood up and lined up to take their walk across the stage and get their degree. Thank goodness for the loudspeakers. They would announce each name. When some names were called you could hear someone yell out thing like Go Barb or Right on Brad. You could tell these visitors were proud of their graduates. They were in alphabetical order so I started listening close when they got to the J's. Then I heard it. Kathy Elizabeth Jennings. I couldn't help it, I had tears running down my cheeks. I stood up and clapped. I whistled and yelled go Kathy. Everyone around me was smiling. I looked over at Mr. and Mrs. Jennings. After he saw me cheering for Kathy he stood up as well as his wife and clapped for Kathy also. I was so proud of her. Mary Ann looked at me with a somewhat sad look on her face. After the announcement of names you could go meet your graduate in a designated area. I looked on my program to see where I might be able to see Kathy. The stadium was wall to wall people. I went to the designated area and saw Kathy and her parents hugging. Kathy was crying tears of joy. She even hugged Mary Ann or vice versa. I stood back about 20 feet. I didn't want to interrupt her moment with her family. All of a sudden she looked up and saw me. She smiled and ran to me and gave me a big hug and for the first time ever she kissed me. Tears were still running down her face. She whispered in my ear, I love you Jimmy. Every now and then she would call me Jimmy. I said, I love you too Kathy Elizabeth Jennings. We hugged once more. My parents are throwing me a party and all my friends and relatives are going to be there. Are you coming? I'd love to but I better sit this one out. Not really sure your parents would want me there. I will be there in spirit. We hugged one more time and she went back to her family. I headed home thinking how some people can make you so happy. Kathy was one of those people for me. I figured that was what true love is. You could feel the love of a person just by being with them. When Kathy kissed me, I knew she was the one. The one that completes my life. I stopped at a bar to have a couple of beers. It was funny when I saw Ben there. We talked about nothing in particular. He really wasn't so bad of a guy. I'm happy I didn't beat the crap out of him. After a few beers it was getting late and I headed for home. At least the next day was Sunday and I could sleep in. I thought about Kathy and her graduation party. I really wished I could have been there, but I knew the focus would be on me and possibly Marianne instead of on Kathy, where it belonged. It was near midnight when there was a knock on my door. I wondered who would be there at this time of night. I got up, turned on the light and answered the door in my briefs. I opened the door to see who it might be. I peeked around the door and saw Kathy standing there. She had the biggest smile on her face. May I come in? She asked. Of course, but what are you doing here? What about your party? It was fun, but everyone went home and I thought about you. So I grabbed a night bag and thought I'd come see you. You don't mind do you? Mind? I'm so happy to see you. The trailer's a mess, but I wasn't expecting company. Do you have clean sheets on the bed? Asked Kathy. Fairly clean. I changed them two days ago but slept on the couch watching TV. I was really wondering what was going to happen. I'm not stupid, but I never thought Kathy would come here. Jimmy, I might as well say it. I'm in love with you and I want to make love to you. I have to tell you a few things first. My parents know I'm here. They're not overly happy about it, but they said I was old enough to make my own decisions. They also said they realized that Marianne was the problem and not you. I love you Kathy, you know that. Quiet, she then smiled. Let me finish. Mom asked if I was on birth control pills, and I told her I started on them a few months ago when I realized how much I care for you. I also have to tell you I'm a virgin. I've never dated much because most guys want the same thing, and I wanted to save myself for the man I love. Jimmy, you better be sure of your feeling for me because I'm betting the rest of my life on you. I took her in my arms and kissed her. 
We went into the bedroom and she let me slowly undress her. She was so beautiful. She had nice perky breasts, and she trimmed her pussy neatly with just a patch of hair. I still had on my briefs, but my hard-on was pushing hard against them. Let it out before it rips your underwear, said Kathy with a smile. We hugged and kissed standing there in the bedroom, my cock pressing against her belly. She backed up and sat on the end of the bed. I got on my knees and put my mouth against her muff. Oh my. I wasn't expecting that, said Kathy. I pushed her back lightly, so she lay on the bed while I began eating her pussy in earnest. I spread her pussy lips and saw her hymen. I licked at it with my tongue, but not enough to break it. Kathy was loving it. Take me Jimmy, make me your woman. I don't want to wait any longer. I stood up and put the head of my cock against her pussy opening. I waited for a few seconds until I heard Kathy say, I'm ready. I pushed my cock in past the head. I heard Kathy scream out and quickly stopped. Well, we're past the hard part. She tried to smile. Give me a few seconds to adjust. Hope you don't mind the blood. I love you Kathy. The last thing I want to do is hurt you. Just let me know when you're ready. Yes, guys. It happened. After her shower she put on some baby doll pajamas. She really looked cute. I went and took a quick shower and joined her on the bed after turning off the lights. It might seem strange, but we cuddled the whole night. I woke up in the same position that I went to sleep in. I was cuddled up to Kathy's backside. I got up and used the bathroom. When I came out Kathy was awake. She used the bathroom and came back to the bed. What's on the agenda for today? I asked Kathy. First, I want you to make love to me again, and then you can take me out for breakfast. I want the world to know that we are officially a couple. After making love we got dressed and went to the Bob Evans where she used to work and sat and had breakfast together. After that she took me to her house and we had a nice talk with her parents. Epilogue. We began dating regularly. We decided that we wouldn't get married for at least a year. She has started her new job and we saw each other at least four times a week. We spoke on the phone most every day. She spent quite a few nights at my trailer. We both were saving money for our future. I got along pretty good with her parents. They even apologized for the way they had treated me in the past. I didn't go to the bar very often, but I did see Ben a few times. He told me that when Tony found out Mary Ann's baby was black he left for parts unknown. No one knew where he went. He wasn't about to take any DNA test. Ben found a girlfriend and has been dating. Rob and Sheila did get divorced, but it wasn't final till after he got a raise. Now he pays even more in child support and alimony. I'm willing to make a bet that he didn't think Marianne was worth it. As for Marianne, she still lives in her apartment 40 miles away. She does have quite a few friends and as of now is raising the baby on her own. Her parents and Kathy do go see her once in a while. She told Kathy that she made a big mistake in cheating on me and not to make the same mistake. It will never happen, replied Kathy. You see, I really do love him and someday I do want to have his children. Kathy did tell me that Marianne is dating, but she's not sure if it's serious or not. As for us, life couldn't be much better. And that's the best revenge. And again, thanks to DH here for this story. Incredible guy, incredible story and incredible revenge. Don't forget to subscribe my channel, and watch my own story of cheating wife and why I've started this channel. Love you all, appreciate you all, and see you soon. Cheers.